Not pretty. There's nothing green in here whatsoever except the trees. Freaking tree was a perfect tree. Whoa there, Cash. <laughs> you gonna go 1v1 with the freaking Munjack male and you? What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video here at the ranch. Today, you guys, we have something that we need to show you. We're gonna head to the back and I have to show you what happened to one of the enclosures. So let's go check it out. Cash really thinks Petrie likes him, but Petrie does not like Cash. <laughs> All right, so we're heading over here. Everything looks great. Everything is growing. Everything looks beautiful. It hasn't rained here at the ranch at all. So everything is super, super, super dry. And we don't have sprinklers around the whole ranch. We just don't do that. It's South Florida. It's supposed to rain more often. It just really hasn't dried. This is probably the longest time it hasn't rained here. I would say it hasn't rained here for what, like two months? A month? No, but like a good rain. Yeah, so how long ago was that? Less than a month. No, I think it's about about a month, but we haven't got anything since. So check this out. The deer enclosure looks like a freaking desert, you guys. It is not pretty. There's nothing green in here whatsoever except the trees. And unfortunately, whoa there, Cash. <laughs> you gonna go 1v1 with the freaking Munjack male and you? This tree is doing good. The gumbo limbo tree is doing okay, but it is getting gurgled, gurgled like crazy. And I really don't care about this tree, so if it dies, it dies. This one I really want to save, so it's good. Japanese trees, I want them to survive. But unfortunately, we got here too late and this thing is done. You can see it's, yeah, it's done. So we are probably going to cut this whole thing down to about halfway. We're gonna leave the stump because the deers like to rub against it. So we'll leave the stump, but we're gonna cut it down. So we're gonna take this one down and take that one down. We're gonna cut it down real quick. And then I'm probably gonna go out sometime soon or whenever to go and purchase one of these bush trees as well. It gives a lot of shade and I think it will look good in that corner over there. Whoa well, there. The male was chasing his daughter around a little bit, but that's all right. So yeah, this place is very, very, very dried out. There's nothing really we could really do right now until it starts raining and then we'll reseed it again. So let's go get the Sawzall and cut these things down. You ready, Cash? Yep. All right, cool. All right, so we decided to make a couple seconds because Peanut has been chasing Nutella around like crazy because I think she's in heat. And he wants to rebreed her so we decided to give them some space back up so they have the whole entire enclosure to do what they have to do and then once they calm down we'll start cutting the trees because we have the saws all right there but i know when i go in there they might get a little spooky so i don't want them to get too stressed but as of right now they look like they have calmed down they're chill so that's good definitely need to put a couple more visual barriers in here especially now that there are four in here but like i've mentioned before Hopefully by sometime this year, we will expand them all the way to the cassowaries and we will add other types of structures in here as visual barriers so they can get away from each other. Because obviously in the wild, they're able to do that. And Cash is freaking taking off. I don't know where he's going. He's out of here. But yeah, definitely we'll have to figure something out, especially if we have a couple more deers. I think from this space over here all the way up to over there, well, I know it's 75 feet long by 26 foot and then a little bit more it's a pretty large area so i'm thinking we could probably hold six deer total would be sufficient no more than that any more than that i wouldn't feel really comfortable with putting them in an enclosure of this size i think that is more than enough six deer in this whole entire area would be good but what we'll definitely be doing too is like as you guys know we have the other property we're gonna probably swap bloodlines with other people and put our girls on the other property to add another boy and stuff of that sort but maybe some of the girls here will swap and then you know have a nice group of one male and five females here, which I think would be a beautiful herd here on the ranch. And then we'll have another herd on the other property. Peanut could carry less that we're in here. I feel like he thinks he has the advantage that we're in here. It's less space than deer to run around. And then he starts chasing. Uh, he's chasing it because he's just wanting to get one, but it is midday right now, so it's pretty hot. And I really don't want to be in here for too long. Yeah, no, we're not doing this. We're gonna get out of here. It's too hot right now. They're freaking out too much and I do not want them to hurt themselves. Deer are known to hit the fence too hard, break necks, so let's get the heck out. So it's the next morning, a lot more shade, earlier in the day, not so hot. The deers don't look like they are running around too much. They look a lot better, they're just hungry. So what we're gonna do is feed them and then get that saws off and cut those trees down and get that cleaned up. So let's make it happen. All right, so here we go. Give them some food. They got their postdoc diet that they get every single day. They get sweet potato and apple. But we're filling them up the bucket pretty much completely full now because of the fact of there is really no more browsing in here whatsoever. They are not able to browse 
So that's the other thing that we're gonna have to do in this video later on, possibly. Might wanna make them a hay rack, just so they can have the hay off the ground, even though they do eat off the ground, so it probably doesn't need to be necessary, but that's fine, we'll see what we'll I do. At least this tree is definitely growing back with the leaves because it, we needed more shade. It has been really, really hot in here. But let's come over here and cut this tree real quick. I started it yesterday. Okay, so I gotta do right here. That's a big branch. Let's see what happens. As soon as I press this button, they are gonna freak out. But it isn't too hot and there's a lot more shade, so that helps. Doing good. Bombs away. That is one dead freaking branch right there. All right, so see, they're, they're spazzing out a little bit. But like I mentioned earlier in the video, I am gonna just leave this part here. I just wanted to cut the rest off because it was gonna break eventually. So we're gonna cut this. And we'll cut this. And this. So we'll just leave that there because that is perfect for the deers to go around, rub up and down, especially Pina. Pina loves to rip these things up and just, you know, that's what deers do. They go up and down, up and down and wow, that tree completely changed compared to yesterday. Yesterday, this tree had no leaves, I swear. They all opened up today. And that is a really, really good thing because now we have some uh, more shade. But let me cut a couple more branches while we're in here cutting right now. Let's just cut off some of the dead stuff. All right. So that is what we were worried about yesterday. Them freaking out for no reason. Luckily, that side over there is a softer mesh and they're able to bounce off of it, which helps a lot. But what I've noticed is the reason why I think they're bouncing on it is because they can't see well. I am I'm 90 percent sure all deer species are colorblind. So that black mesh is probably just invisible for them so they probably think it's open and they hit it every time that's the reason why i have the rest of it shake cloth and they don't hit it whatsoever so for sure when we expand we will probably have to put shade cloth in other areas and i might even put shade cloth there sooner than later because of that fact they hit that corner because they don't see what's going on but let me cut this off right here Get all these extra branches in here Better for me to walk through here so I can get around and better for them. But these branches are just old and breaking off. They're so dead. There's no point of having them in here if they're dead. Mark, nothing going on. Get used to it. Nothing to get used to because it's only going to happen every once in a blue moon. I see all these dead branches. Good to take them all off, clean them all up. Always take care of your enclosures. Look at all that stuff. All right. Good, 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 good. All right, so that's pretty much it right there. This tree, I want to cut down as well. So let's cut it down. And then we'll pull everything out of here. Because this thing is done so as well. Zip ties off. So this tree, I tried to save it. I thought I saved it. But unfortunately, too late. Same thing, you guys. So this mesh, we'll get this out of here. And we'll leave this as a branch as well. And like I told you guys earlier, definitely going to get another one of these trees to put on this side for more shades. I'm hoping I find one with another flower. Put it down in the comments, you guys. This tree that's right over here, it's really, really, really cool. It's nice and shady. And it has these pink, awesome flowers. I forget the name of them exactly. But if there's one of another flower, I definitely would like to get that and put that on the other side. Here we go. Here goes nothing. How about that? Cut it right here. freaking tree was a perfect tree until they decided to kill it all right no more saws we're done let's get this out of here and pull all these branches out and get the heck out of the enclosure so they calm back down but again reason why i started working out is there's so much more shade early in the day not so hot whatsoever but it looks like a war zone in here oh look peanuts eating the branches let's pull all that out first Santa to be a door holder i don't want the deers to run out Watch the eyeballs. I put it down in the comments, you guys. Maybe you guys have another species of tree idea you guys think. This area is pretty dead. It's pretty plain. Definitely would like to maybe put something else there. That'd be really cool. Just for more shade. They definitely need more shade. And as you guys know, they're deer. They do live in the plains, but this enclosure is not three acres big. So the more shade, the better, especially during the summer times. And then in the winter, they'll find the spots to uh, get the sun when needed. Some good fire. Boy, this stuff is dry, dry, dry. And we just heard on the news like two minutes ago, it's supposed to get even drier and even hotter. So that's dangerous as well for our native wildlife, like the Everglades. Because as soon as that 
rainstorm comes, the thunderstorms come, the lightning strikes come, and freaking fires start. They're really enjoying this branch over here. So I think I'm gonna leave that branch there for a little bit. It's a little deer enrichment for them for the for the hour until later. So I pull it out. Marg is acting like she's a freaking racehorse right now. Watch your eyeballs. That's it. No, I gotta grab that mesh in there for the hurt themselves. And then I'm gonna leave that branch in there for a few hours. Just so they can, I can see Pina and Nutella are exploring on it. So that's good there. We had a nice, beautiful moringa tree here. Capybaras completely gurgled that as well. The animals only eat certain trees. Some trees they don't. And I put went through so much money trying to find the right trees that they like and they don't like. But every capybara will be different too. Like the, the hibiscus tree over there, they're good. They don't bother it. Moringa tree, they eat it. Guava tree, they don't. It's funny. Some they do, some they don't. You just got to pick and choose and figure out which animal on your property won't eat the tree. But I guarantee if I bring in another group of capybaras here, probably just destroy everything. Other than that, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And as you guys can see over there, that's the best quail mom in town. And speaking about quail, make sure you guys are following me, Blake's Exotic Feeders. Blake's Exotic Feeders is a new business I started here on the ranch. Support the ranch, support the family, support all that cool stuff. And on top of that, support your animals. It's the best quality quail in united states grown right here on the ranch harvest on the ranch bagged ready to go frozen straight to your door next day if you have any questions dm me on blake's exotic feeders and we have every size available at all times plus incubated frozen eggs so if you guys have snakes birds of prey monitors anything that eats other animals which that's the part of life i have frozen quail for you and that's the only feeder i have available here at the ranch other than that give this video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel put your post notifications on stay tuned for more videos here at the ranch and uh Appreciate the support and I'll see you guys later. Peace out everybody.